What's up, everybody? We're going to check out using some Y sensors. They run about $5 to $6 for the PIR sensors or the door contact sensors, depending on when you order them in a pack or individually. Some very inexpensive sensors. They are wireless, and they are using the 900 megahertz frequency to send back to the receiver. Now, initially, they're made to hook up to the receiver that actually attaches to the WISE camera and goes in the WISE cloud. But, of course, as you know, we're not going to do the whole cloud thing here. We want to get this all local and straight into Home Assistant so we can run our automations with speed. So let's check it out. Now, for hardware-wise, we will leave the links down in the description below. And I appreciate if you use those links. It does help us buy different projects and doing things like this because Wise didn't send this to us. I just went ahead and bought this because it thought it would be a cool project and wanted to check it out. It turned out to be a, such a great project. We did a live stream on it, plus had a few people come back and say, hey, could you do a quick little video on it showing the setup without all the side banter that we have, you know, even though it's fun in the live stream. So... Here we're doing this video. So I appreciate you watching everything and now let's check it out. So first you do have the little receiver that is designed to plug into the Wise Cam. It's just a straight standard USB. Now being at a receiver of sorts, there is an antenna inside and you would like to get it away from some various electronics or different pieces of metal they are blocking just to let the antenna breathe. So what I did is use just a standard USB extension cord and plugged it into my server or the Raspberry Pi. Now we are testing this today using the Raspberry Pi 4, which I will say does work great with HASIO. I have tested HASIO on a Raspberry Pi 3. The speeds just as if you've used one before just is not that great compared to using something with a little more horsepower such as a server or a nook or something like that. So, but I will say the Raspberry Pi 4 is a huge improvement for running HASIO on. So if you'd like to stick to the Raspberry Pi line of things, I would highly recommend the Raspberry Pi 4. Pretty quick little device. So for size relations, I do have a few things down here that I know people have seen before because these sensors are very small. And I have just a Wemos D1 Mini, Sonoff Basic, and just a SD card adapter. This is the receiver. This is the PIR sensor. They do have a sticky back to them with a replaceable battery. This is the door contact sensor. They do have some sticky tape that goes on the back where you attach it to your door and the door jam or whatever you might want to do for detecting a open or closed state on something, say a freezer or, hey, dog did it, say even a toilet lid, right? Now, what I'd like to see is someone do something and hack these little door contact sensors and throw a little push button on them. That way we would just have this part and we could stick it to a door or a next to a light switch or anything where we can just do a little push button. And these things are really quick as you'll see and it definitely would replace having to use those slow Amazon dash buttons. So if you're down to doing some little hardware hacking and you do put a button on these things instead of using the read switch, definitely post a link down in the comments below and we'll get it to everyone and see might be a good little project to do. So let's clear the desk of all this and just keep the sensors and the Raspberry Pi and then we'll get the software installed, which is really simple. So the first prerequisite for the Sense component, of course, is HASIO or Home Assistant. And I know you're probably sitting there, some of you thinking, well, hey, I do run just this version in Docker. I run it on Unraid or I run it on various other boxes. Well, guess what? You can use this without any issues. I did initially install this on my Unraid server and simply plugged it into my Unraid server and passed in the device to that Docker container and it worked out great. And I will leave some links with some screenshots how I passed that into the container for the few Unraid users out there that want to do this. So the second component you're going to need is HACS. If you haven't seen what HACS is, it's the Home Assistant Community Store. We won't be doing the install of that. Doc and a few others did some great install videos for that. So if you haven't installed it, we're going to either put the link up here in the little card or it will also be in the video description as always. So definitely check those out. It's real simple to install the community store. And then next we'll go to Home Assistant and install the software. So once you've installed the community store, you should get it inside the tab of Home Assistant. 
you go to community store you'll go to settings and down here where it says add custom repository that's where you'll need the link in step one and very important you will need to add it as type integration so we'll paste and add this in and for type we'll do integration and then on yours you won't have the chair in the way but there is a save button back there so once you see it's added in there you should get the wise sense component you'll need to click install you'll know it's installed when it changes to reinstall or uninstall now at this point you'll need to plug in the USB receiver to either your Pi, your server, or whatnot. So at this point, you, if you're using a little different install, you need to pass that into, say, a Docker container. You will need to do that part and get it into Home Assistant. So we're using the Pi here for this test. We're going to plug it into the Pi. So we've got our extension cord plugged in, and we'll simply plug this in and see what status light we get. At this point, we do have a amber status light listed. Showing it is plugged in, let's move on to the next step. And we'll go ahead and skip the manual because we're not using that. And then we need to add the following to our configuration file under our binary sensor section in the configuration YAML. Now, if you already have a binary sensor section, make sure you do not double up and add this twice. You would simply need to add these two lines and that's it. Now the device name may be a little different. I noticed the first time I did use that on my Unraid server and your mileage may vary depending on what your hardware is. And I did check my log on that particular server and it did install as HID raw one and not HID raw zero. So you will need to change that number if you have any issues. So my configuration YAML, we're gonna add these. Now I didn't have the binary sensor section on my configuration YAML because this is just a little test install that I did for this Raspberry Pi 4. So go ahead and save it. Go back into Home Assistant, configuration. Of course it did move it on us in the recent version, server control, we'll check config, and then we'll do a restart. Now once it's restarted, check on over at the receiver and see if you have a blue light. So we've turned the light out on our bench and you can see we do have a blue LED lit up on our receiver. If you get the blue LED, you know you got the right device name in your configuration YAML and the rest is just straight downhill from here as you'll see. So once we've restarted and do take note if you have bound other sensors to it, they will show up in your entities as off with the assumed state of true and no device class. They will update as things change or you can just unpair them and repair them if needed. So we're going to skip all through this. You can read it at your own disposal. But to add them, it's real simple. You need to go to the services and we'll do a Ysense scan. Now once you pick that, you will need to use the little it looks like a almost like a sim card tool that they include in the box that to push the reset button for three seconds and it will pair up so we're gonna go ahead and do that now with the pir sensor go to developer tools and then you'll go to services and you'll look for or you can do a type or just scroll down since it is a w it should be towards the bottom and look for ysense.scan and you'll simply hit call service and you will notice the blue LED starts blinking on the receiver. So push the button for three seconds. You should get a red LED blinking on the PIR sensor. And then you'll notice also the blue LED will stop blinking on the receiver to show it's paired, as well as you notice now we get a notification in Home Assistant showing us that the device was added. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and add in the other door sensor as well. So we'll hit call service again, and you need to repeat this for each device. Of course, we've got another notification. Of course, we need to add it to our GUI now, so we'll go to configure UI, and we'll add a new entity card. We'll just call it WISE. And we'll add these two WISE sensors, and then we'll save it. Close it. And your display may not look like this. I have it zoomed in for the sake of the video. So we go ahead and we can change the name of it. Kitchen motion. We'll change this one to backdoor wise. 
So as you can see, pretty cool. It does automatically add the device classes in. So it shows you detected, it shows open, closed, as well as you do get the RSSI, which is the signal level along with the battery level. Now Wise claims that they're gonna get like a 12 month battery usage out of them. But of course, it could depend on how many times the doors open and close along with the motion in the area. So just to show the speed of it, we're gonna pull the magnet away from the read sensor. And you can see it's almost instantaneous and go right back and it goes back to closed. Now I know I had a few people asking after the live stream and even during the live stream, what about the range? I've heard the range hasn't been that great or anything. Now I found various people at that time were saying the range was like around from 70 to 100 feet. Now I found it's much better than that actually. I actually went all the way in my backyard and went around the side of the shop so I had several walls blocking me and I was still able to take the door sensor and open and close it without, without any issue. I then, since I couldn't hide from it all in the backyard, and I don't really have a small yard, I, I went down the front of the road and walked down two or three houses until I dropped finally not able to see the connection opening and closing. I walked so far that I really I couldn't even detect my Wi-Fi from my ubiquity access points. So it definitely has more coverage than that. So it's def way more coverage than I need. It will cover how I could probably put these at my neighbor house. So everyone's house and setup is gonna be a little different. So definitely put that receiver in a spot that's gonna get better coverage away from any metal or anything where it can get good line of sight to your sensors and you shouldn't have any issues of covering your house. Of course, unless you maybe have a mansion or something, but you probably got a different system, right? So that's it for the Y sensors. Stupid simple, isn't it? Just pair them right up, some cheap sensors. You can't beat the price of them and you don't need any cloud and you can get them locally controlled all right in Home Assistant. Now, one thing to note, probably wouldn't be a good idea of looking at the way this sensor looks. Don't go put this in the bathroom. I know that you're probably going, hey, I'm gonna do my automated lighting in the bathroom and use one of these. It just to me, it looks too much like a camera and I would definitely freak out some guests if I put this in my bathroom. So think twice before where you put these things. Uh, don't wanna confuse the wife, the guest, et cetera. But is it the great little sensors? Um, I've been testing them for a little bit in the house and haven't had any issues with them. Definitely works great. So definitely give us a like, thumbs up, whatever it may be. Give us a comment down below. Tell us if we're doing good, if we suck or whatever it might be, right? If you got any cool use cases, whether you're gonna use these, uh, say a doorbell or something like that, or maybe you're gonna modify them with the button, feel free to share with everybody. Maybe we'll post some pictures on the channel. So that's it. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already and y'all take care. Wait, so maybe we'll stick with the same tradition. Maybe we started with the last video. Won't go as long, but here, check out a cool little clip. You can ride it. Hang on to it. Just hang on to it, okay? There you go. Yeah. Go up, ride fast and you'll go up this one. Ride fast. All right, keep going. Hit, hold, yep, hit the brakes. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Go faster. Yeah, go faster so you can hit, go over these bumps. Oh, there you go, you good, you saved it. Yep, you saved it.